Although millions of children have surgery safely each year, some research indicates that anesthetic medicines used to induce sleep in young children may have long-term effects on learning. Researchers at the Mayo Clinic Children's Center need your help to study these effects. Children born in the Rochester area between 1994 and 2007 can volunteer. The study involves four hours of interactive evaluation and participants are compensated. The purpose of this evaluation is to provide a snapshot or picture of your child or your pattern of learning strengths and weaknesses. You are not taking one long test. We do this by using several different paper and pencil tests and puzzles as well as some computer-like games. There will be someone who will administer the test to you and be in the room for most of the assessment period. We will look at such areas as memory, language, and attention. You will find some of the tests pretty easy. Others may be more difficult. No one does well in all the tasks. We all have things that we are good at and others that are more challenging. In addition, we provide your caregivers with a couple of questionnaires that help us understand how you are in daily life. The evaluation is scheduled for roughly four hours. However, you are not tested the entire time, and we do provide breaks and snacks. Now, let's show you some examples of what the assessment may look like. Draw the lines as quickly Here the child is completing a connect the dot game. Again. The participant is given different instructions on how to complete each game. The goal is to be quick, but also accurate. For this test, we are measuring the participant's ability to plan, organize, and problem solve. This is a test that relies on a variety of thinking skills. Basically, it's a series of increasing complex puzzles. You have to attempt to complete the puzzle within a certain time limit. You also have to try to use the fewest number of moves possible. This is a task that may seem very easy at first, but it becomes more difficult as you go along. This is a matching game. The participant is shown a design made up of different lines. They are then given a series of designs and asked to find the one that matches what they first saw. What you are now seeing is the operant test battery, or monkey test. It's called the monkey test because it was first used with rhesus monkeys. The monkey test has five smaller tasks that last several minutes each. This is the one test where you will be in the room by yourself as you take it. The technician will provide you directions and anything else you will need. You will be asked to follow certain patterns and remember them. If you can follow or remember the pattern correctly, the monkey test will give you a reward. Money. Hi Skylar, how old are you and what grade in school are you in? I'm nine and I'm in third grade. Third grade. So you just finished doing the test. What did you think of the test? It was sort of fun. It was fun? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Just fun? Cool. Okay. Which test was your favorite? The, one, the machine that monkeys used to use. Okay. So that was going to be my next question, if you knew that one of the tests was for monkeys. Well, tell me what you liked best about the monkey test, which is that last stuff that you just did on that big machine over there. What did you like best? You get to, like, push these buttons. Mm-hmm. To, like, then if you get the right one, you get, like, um, coins. Mm-hmm. Did you get a lot of nickels? Yeah. How many nickels do you think you got? A lot. A lot. Good. Well, what will you tell your friends about this study? It was really fun, and some of it was hard. Okay. Cool. That well, sounds good. You liked it? Put it over. It was pretty good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Thank you. What prompted you and your colleagues to begin the mask study? Researchers at several universities and the National Center for Toxicologic Research, part of the United States Food and Drug Administration, have demonstrated in a variety of animal species, including monkeys, that exposure to anesthetic medications may cause permanent injury to the animal brain, as well as lasting effects on learning and behavior. 
These studies have created broad concern within the community of doctors that provide anesthesia care in this country and around the world. How has Mayo Clinic contributed to this research? Well, results of observational studies performed at universities around the world have been mixed. Some show a negative effect on learning, others do not. Three studies performed at the Mayo Clinic using medical and school records have created particular concern. These studies consistently show that children exposed to anesthetic medications more than once prior to the age of three years have an increased risk of learning disability. Other studies performed elsewhere have found similar concerns in children with multiple anesthetic exposures. What needs to be done? Well, observational studies like the studies done so far at Mayo usually rely on past records, both medical and school, and are limited in their ability to determine cause and effect because of the large number of factors that cannot be carefully controlled. Ideally, researchers prefer to study a large group of children and follow their progress into the future. Unfortunately, this type of study is very expensive and takes many years to complete. As this issue is very concerning and information is required in a shorter period of time, alternative methods that use both historical information and also gather information uh, currently have been chosen for the MASK study. How will the MASK study help? The National Institutes of Child Health and Development, with the support of the United States Food and Drug Administration and the Center for uh, National Center for Toxicologic Research have funded the MASK study because of the unique capacity of Mayo researchers to carefully and completely study the health status and learning capacity of children in the community. This capacity is due in large part to the unique and critically important relationship between Mayo, the Rochester area community, and Rochester schools. What will happen in the MASK study? The MASK study is a five-year effort that will compare children born in Rochester who have either been exposed to anesthesia or who have not been exposed. In order to compare enough children, it's necessary for Mayo researchers to identify a thousand children currently between the ages of 8 and 12 or 15 and 19 who are born in the community and are willing to participate in a four-hour battery of tests that examine many areas of behavior, intelligence, and learning. Many kids find that these tests are interesting and even fun. For example, one of them is like a video game and has been used to test intelligence in monkeys. The researchers will be selecting a group of children for testing who have been exposed to anesthesia. They will also be testing another group of children with similar characteristics but who have not been exposed to anesthesia. They will then compare the results of testing between the two groups of children. What can members of the community do to help with the MASK study? Well, Mayo researchers asked if you're contacted about participating in the study, you will give it careful consideration. It will be important for researchers to test as many of the eligible children as possible if the study is to be successful. However, participation is entirely voluntary. If you'd like to see if you uh, are eligible for the study or your child may be eligible uh, or just want to learn more, you can call the researchers at 507-255-1558 or email them at rstmask at mayo.edu.